I'm getting ready to do the final shaping of the stock. I've taken this, uh, the lock areas, side plate area down with a, a sanding block with some 220 on it so that the, the side plate here stands just proud of the wood just where this bevel is on it and also the lock so the lock is even along here and the bevel on the lock is level with with this area and I've traced out the area around the lock mortars where I'm going to shape the stock to the area inside this line will stay flat I'll basically this is just basically guidelines. I'm going to go by eye. I'll leave a little more wood up here. I'll leave around an eighth of an inch of wood around the lock. Maybe a little, about three eighths back here. And the uh, the butt cap is on. So I'll be filing the wood and the metal to get this fit along here as I'm rounding the stock. I've got the hole drilled for the screw here for the trigger guard and I drill a hole up here for the pin the pin will go through the the trigger guard tank to hold the trigger guard in and I've pinned the uh, the ramrod thimble here because I'll be filing this area I'll be filing the wood and the metal for this tang here and blend that in with the wood up here by my trigger guard and this will all be rounded from the trigger guard mortars here up to this line around the plateau here or on both sides so now I can do some stock shaping I made me some new soft jaws to hold those stocks and this is a tool I made years ago when I was doing my long rifle because those the lock plateaus are not parallel due to the tapered barrel. If it was a straight barrel it would be. But sometimes you, uh, you have to clamp pieces in this device that are not parallel. So I made this and that fits in here. So one side will clamp one side and then this will change for the non-parallel side. So. I can clamp that stock up and start shaping it. Quite a bit of metal in those castings, so I can take that down some, blend that in good, and then when I uh, do the finishing, this rounding this out to these plateaus, I just have to not go below the edge of where this is. So I'll be filing from the metal to the wood. So I don't take the wood down further than the metal. Uh, I'm just using my various files and sandpaper. I'm using 220 to shape, wrapped on a file. So I'm taking this, rounding all this off and molding all this up into my lock panel here. This one is pretty much done. And blending the lock panel in to the trigger guard area. Taking it out so I got a nice border around the lock panel. So it's just working with files and sandpaper. And I've almost got the four stocks done. A little more rounding. And a lot more sand and then I've got a corner here. <laughs> Working everything right up to this line here. In this lock panel, or you know, the lock plateau as I like to call it. <laughs> now I'm using the 220. Got a lot of sand in the glue. This area down to nice, even, it's like a barrel, it just rolls right up to the barrel. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing now. This one is 
pretty much shaved back to here and then I'll have the butts level in the wood with the tines so I can form this lock panel area and then start shaping this and establishing my perimeters I these are for the sides and then I just got to come right down to the edges. I don't want to take any more out of here. Just right down to the edge, just look at it up here. And blend that all back till it all molds in with this butt cap. I wet them to raise the grain for the first sanding. So the rest will be done with sandpaper after on various things. But uh, yeah, I really like the way they turned out. They're final shaped and they feel really good. So yeah, I'm just. Uh, Sand them and, uh, and put the old finish on them. And then we'll be polishing metal, browning all the steel, and then I can put them together. I sanded it with uh, 220 and I'm raising the grain one last time and I'm going to sand it with 320 I'm going to polish in these butt caps while they're still attached to the gun before I do my final stock sanding with 320. These things are kind of hard to hold so removing all these casting marks taking some of my engraving away so I think we're going to have to learn how to engrave if I want to put it back on. 220 to take the file marks off. Then I'll switch to 320, 400, 600, and then I'll go to the polishing wheels. And I sure like working with this German silver. I'm using 320 now. I like German silver. This is the first time I've really worked with it. But, uh, I like it. Well, I do believe I've worried these pieces of wood quite enough. They're all final sanded with 320 and then this very fine steel wool. 
So it's time to put on the oil. Good old standby. Birchwood Casey True Oil. Been using on on guns my whole life and it's still the best stuff there is, so that's what I'm gonna use. First coat of oil, hand rubbed. Boy, is it bringing out the figure in that walnut. That's some really pretty stuff. This is a tedious, time consuming part. All these casting marks have to be filed away, filed and polished away. And I'm using my small files. Jewelers files and the 220 grit emery. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of work. But it's worth it. Final hand polishing with 600 Some tang screws and I got the two lock screws. And the trigger guard screw. I'm rubbing it down with steel wool between coats. The first coat just got sucked right into the wood. This is the second coat. Oh, the figure in this wood is really pretty. Using very fine steel wool. Put it on and take it off. And that's how you get a nice finish with all the pores filled. And protect this wood. So it's called Cherry Red. It's a case hardening compound. It'll uh, infuse carbon into the surface of mild steel so that it's a hard no more. It'll be soft on the inside. It'll be a hard, have a hard case. Well, they call it case hardening. It'll keep the screw uh, slots from getting distorted. So what I will be doing is heating those screw threads, or the not the threads, but the heads up cherry red, <laughs> and dipping them in this stuff, and then a bunch of it will uh, melt onto the end of it, and then I'll heat it up again, and then uh, quench it in the uh, water there. I just put my eighth coat of hand rubbed oil, true oil, on the stocks and taking them down with a uh, four-aught steel wool between coats. And I was going to stop at seven but the, the wood pores were almost all filled so I decided to go with another one. So I let this dry for two days and then I'll take it down very lightly with uh, this, a new pad of steel wool, just enough to take the sheen off of it. So it's not so shiny, but yeah, it's, it's pretty filled and sealed. So the stocks are almost done. The last thing I have to do on the barrels is mount the rear sights. So I have these little sights, and I'm going to dovetail them into the tang, just back of the breech plug. Where the breech plug meets the barrel, so I, I'm using my hacksaw. I use a little hacksaw here. Back about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to take a slot about an eighth of an inch. And about a sixteenth of an inch deep. I'm taking out the metal in between slots here. File that 
till I have a nice notch there, then I'll be using the, the triangular files to file a dovetail so that this thing just slips in there nice and snug. Not too tight because I don't want to bend the breech plug of the tang. But, uh, yeah, that's the last thing I have to do before I can polish and brown the barrels. Fifty-four, fifty-six thousandths now. So I'm just going to start cutting my undercuts. I've got a ways to go. But if I eat too much off and then it gets loose, then I'll have to peen these edges down. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want it to fit nice. So I'll just take my time, go slow, and file the dovetail. Now I'm making a dovetail file on my little triangular needle file here by taking the teeth off of one edge. I have this one that this is a three cornered file with one edge is, is ground off. I use this for doing dovetails on uh, my long rifle, but it's too big to do these little sights. So I'm making one from this file here. Just gonna take it down so that it doesn't cut. So it doesn't cut the bottom of my groove. I don't want it any deeper. I just want to take the the sides out to this 60 degree angle. Almost, but not quite. Just like on the dovetails in the wood, there's a fine line between just going in and being too loose, so you have to sneak up on it because you go a couple of strokes too far and it'll be too loose. And a little bit more to go. I'll measure this distance each side and get it centered. That's about the best I can do. with about 30 32 31 I think that's close enough to center so that sights in and I'll file these the sides it just here down to the width of the tang and yeah this sights install I'll round these edges over a little so they don't get caught on things wet sanding with the uh, 400 and 600 I'm trying to get all the marks out left by the other paper and the files and then I'll go on the cloth wheels in the barrels I just got to go over those with 600 wet The steel parts are all brown now, and the, the brass and silver is all polished. I haven't really been polished until they've been hand polished. I need much of this stuff. Silver and gold. Treasure. very lightly just 
to kill the sheen but not take it all the way down to the wood. All the pores are pretty well filled by now. Well, this is what I've been working towards. Uh, the parts are finished so now it's time to put together a finished gun. So I'm going to start off with the trigger. Oil that I've put in a coat of oil on all the steel pieces. To keep them from rusting. I don't want to say will rust. And I put a drop of oil on the pin, pivot pin right there. Now I've got to cut my final pins and make them just slightly smaller than that. So they're 30 seconds to a sixteenth below the surface and then these uh, holes will fill up with dirt and oil which they're full of stuff now. I'm going to have to run my sixteenth drill bit through there to clear those out. And then I've got to cut my pins, the final pins, it'll be slightly below the surface. I got my pins cut for here and for the trigger guards. I'm, I don't want too many pins here. I'll get them mixed up after I get the barrel on, then I'll make the pins for the ramrod thimbles. And I have the pin for the uh, butt cap retainer. So I wipe a coat of oil. I'll be continuously oiling this barrel. It's going into the stock. It's a nice little coat of oil on here, not enough to run off, but just to keep it from rusting, and then we'll be able to wipe that down once it's in the stock. Drop oil in the screw all here. On the end of the thread. Get my screws all browned. It's a good feeling being able to put this one on this on here to stay. I'm not going to tighten that all the way tight yet. Pull it down, but back it off a little until I get these pins in. Hurt to put a little oil on the pin either. Move the pin hole. Different kind of oil. Snug. I just set that down below the surface. That's my little pinpoint here. Yeah, far here. Don't come out a little long because she's going to be not below the surface very much. Okay. Pretty good right at the surface. This one goes in up here. Now I can snug this up pretty good. Doesn't have to be too tight. Silver is the round barrel. That's nice. Okay, now I have a screw that goes in here. 
Look a little oil on that too. Never know when you're gonna have to pull these out someday. Yeah, we'll hurt to put a little oil on this, hope we go in and see it. It's sealed in there, but Now I've got a, a pin here, just got just slightly short with a bent over end on it. And I've got a little groove there that it can go in. Well, not to. You got these on and pin just like I did the barrel. Put a little oil down in my ramrod groove. Work the ramrod in there a few times. I might have to I sand I trimmed it down a little bit. I might have to sand it, sand it down so I can put the trigger guard on. Turn out pretty. Just love polished brass. We have a screw going in the back here. Oh, yeah. But I'm not going to tighten it up until I get the pin in. It's through. Where else for it to go? Side plate. Everything's tight because of the oil. Well, isn't that thick? Also, I'm going to oil them. Make sure there's oil on this thing. In the key places. The excess off. Get any oil in the frizz and can help it. It's pretty good. I'll be wiping oil on this continually. And just a little bit in each of the screw holes. Long 
this one goes in the back. So you don't have to over tighten any screws on these things. You just want it snug. But you don't want to distort anything. She's together in brass 62 caliber smooth bore. It's together. I gotta tighten this screw. Get that this thing here. All right, <laughs> that's nice. I like that. Yeah, it is something. It's the nicest pistol I've ever made. And look at the wood on that thing. Oh my gosh. There you go. French style colonial pistol. 62 caliber smooth bore. That's it. <laughs> I like it. I'll get the other one together and I'll have my pair. Well, this is what it's all about. Got two completed 1700s French style colonial pistols. German silver. 50 caliber rifle. Brass mounted. 62 caliber smooth bore. Other than that, they're pretty pretty matched. But yeah. <laughs> I like this. I can't wait to shoot them. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to shoot good. I shot them once, but not with a ball. But uh, yeah, next that's the next thing to see how they do with the ball. Or charge a shot in the case of the 62. So now I'm working on the case to get the, the case done to hold them. I don't have a case set. Been a really fun project and. Uh, I'm just really, I'm really excited now. I got two guns, two new guns to shoot. And they're going to be fun to shoot. Just love these flintlocks. <laughs> and when you build them, it just adds another dimension to it. The, the fun is in the building and watching them come together and then you have them at the end. And it's just, uh, I think, just a very cool thing. So now the real fun starts when we get to go shooting. Can't wait. We've got belt hooks on the guns now. Ordered these online, a place called Middlesex Village Trading Company. They're handmade out of steel. And uh, they're pretty cool. I wanted to get these on there because I have to modify the uh, case to allow for these things. So, yeah, I'm going to brown them now. I'll go over how I install them. Okay, what I had to do here, these have a pin and then a hole here where the, the lock bolt goes through, but I found out that the two are slightly different. So I marked them. This one is Two, I marked with two file notches here and I've got a number two here. What I did, I made these cardboard patterns. And lined up with the hole there. And then I laid that on the gun. 
number eight bolt through there. We line this up, kind of centered on the gun up here, and then marked and drilled for a hole there. But yeah, they're they are handmade. I believe they're made in India, but they're they're nicely finished. But uh, this is for for number one on the other gun. But you can if you line them up. <laughs> They're not exactly the same, they're not off very much because these holes are, you can hardly tell, but they are, they have to be custom fitted to each gun. So what I'm going to do now, I had to get longer lock bolts. So I've got these oval heads, so now I'm going to chamfer, chamfer this for these. So that'll lock it in there real good so it doesn't have any play. And these are pretty well polished, I'll do a little final polishing on them and then I'll brown them and put them on there and I'll have belt hooks and then I can uh, notch out the case and maybe make some little cradles I've got some balsa wood to do. I'm out here at the shooting range I joined the gun club and uh, finally put some lead through these guns for the first time I couldn't video it because the wind's just blowing relentlessly. I don't have uh, balls for the 62 caliber. I've been using 50 caliber with four patches. And they both shoot pretty good. I actually hit better with the smoothbore than I did with the rifle. I need to practice. And I got my double odd buck here that I've been using in the blunderbuss. And I fired one of these sinkers not very accurate well, you wouldn't want to get hit with it with the double it works really well 110 grade it's a good load it's a good, a good tough load and I think that box is pretty massacred if that box is dead <laughs> but it just shows me I need a lot more practice I'm going to shoot some guns today. My target set out there, 20 paces, dueling range. My blunderbuss, a one inch bore, roughly four gauge. And I'm going to be firing it with uh, 120 grains of double F powder and 20 double op buck. So my touch hole is clear, it's nice and tight, everything's clean. The charger said 120 grains. Peg. I still have to drill it, put a line to hold it. Twenty grains on the way. So I made some wads that I'm trying here. Something a little different. I'm trying to get away from the newspaper. What I've got is a piece of it's four inch by five inch piece of burlap that I've. Uh, packed a uh, patch lube into. That's going down there on top of the powder. Twenty double watts. charger that puts three grains of powder in this big lock. This is a 62 
however smooth or I finally got Touch hole is clear. I run a patch down these. Touch hole isn't clear. She's not going to fire. I've got my charger here. This holds 40 grains of powder, and I've got some pre lube patches here with Wonder Lube on them. This will be the first time firing it with these four size balls. Last time I didn't have the mold, and I just used the 50 caliber balls. Open this. 40 grains of powder. Charger for my pistol box. That one's half cock is safety on these. They won't, they're not supposed to fire from half cock. An old worn lock sometimes will. Just where the old saying going off half cock. of a rifle barrel. I like those wads. Not only do they not smolder, I can reuse them. <laughs> 